our topic of the session is today. Oh, no. Yes. What's the passion? It's close. It's turning your passion. Oh. oh, it's turning your passion into a startup idea. Uh, yeah, pretty much it. Turning your passion into um, an opportunity. So, how many of you guys did the homework that we assigned last week? Okay, so we're gonna get um, all of you guys to come up and present uh, what you research. So, who wants to go? Okay, you can come up right now. So, one quick thing. One quick thing. Uh, what is an important part about getting a startup off and running? One important part that talks about getting work together to start a sure, startup. Can you give the mic? Problem in your passion to have a startup. I agree, but what what brings what do you bring together to get a startup sure. going? A team. So it's a founding team. So when we have folks come up, then we're going to have the person read out their idea, and if anybody else has the same idea, guess what? We're starting to found a team. It's a founding team. So then, what I would like is for you also to come up, right? And, and that becomes a founding team. That's huge, right? So no, call out your idea first, and speak, and then call out who else has a similar or the same idea. Um, uh, my passion is to solve people's problems by creating products and gadgets. Good. And what's your idea? Um, like for example, kids sometimes don't have friends and like to watch TV. So I came up with a playdate app where kids can set up their own playdate with their permission online on their phones. Okay. Does anybody else here have a passion to, uh, to solve little people's problems, particularly around play dates? I see that as a good passion around kids. Play dates. Okay, we will help you found a team. So to finish up, uh, we, I asked you about your passion, and then I asked you about the solution, but I missed an important step. The problem step, right? So you want to state your problem? What's the problem? In so this? basically, many kids don't have friends, and they like like to play video games and watch TV. So that will help them make friends. Yeah, very good, very good. Is that good? Okay, everybody, great idea. What do we do? Okay, who wants to come up next? I'm going to start going from the back first because I don't like back ventures. Uh, you don't want to be called if you're the back. Come up front really quick, okay? okay. So. My passion is like video games, watching TV, and technology, I guess. So, an idea I came up with that's a huge problem. Uh, well, there's a problem. People. Uh, Wireless technology is the idea I came up with. The problem is a lot of people trip over wires. It's annoying to plug it in. What if you just had a device that you could plug into an outlet and with Bluetooth you could charge your device? Very good. Very good. And what's the problem that you can The big problem is too many wires, too much fiber. Wires. It's cluttered around. You have to find the charger. What if it's just one brick plugged into an outlet? That's right. And, and it and wirelessly uh, with Bluetooth connects to your device. Great idea. Does anybody else have a similar idea that you want to found a founding team? Why don't you come on? Can you stay here for a second? <laughs> Um, my passion is gaming, so um, like in many computers and games, like there are viruses, so like uh, people warn you not to play them because of the viruses and all. So um, I plan to make a company that will stop all the viruses, like which is probably just one device, a computer, computer, all the viruses will go out. Maybe my company will make other websites that do not contain any viruses. Okay, that's really good. That's really good. Do you think uh, do you think you guys want to form a team? You don't have to decide right now, but think about it. Okay? Because at the end of the day, 
we cannot have, how many people are here? 100 students. We cannot have 100 startups, right? Because guess what? A company is not made out of one person. A person doesn't a company make. It's a team that a company that's made, that makes a company. So think about the teams that you want to form as we go through this journey next, okay? So you guys think about it. Thank you both. A big round of applause for all of you. Okay. Um, you want to come up? Okay, so my passion is like uh, programming and like doing coding. 
So the problem is, is that like on my computer, I kind can of you, can you put the like, microphone close closer so that we can capture it on video and stand in the center if you can. Thank you. Yep. I kind of do like two modes on my computer. Like I have my program mode where I have like Xcode, the iOS simulators, Safari, and other stuff open. And then like let's say I want to just kind of do some gaming for a little bit. It's uh, the microphone is not on actually. It seems to be on. Yeah, it's on. It's on all the way. Yeah, let's try this. Check. Okay, so um, the game is like, oh, there we go. The game is like, my simulators and stuff, they're kind of running slow, so if I want to go game for like 15 minutes, I have to quit everything and... Keep, keep close to your mouth, please, yeah. I have to quit everything and like I have to like, you know, wait for a really long time for everything to quit and I have to reopen lots of apps and like close all the workspaces. So my uh, solution would be to create an app that like, like you could just, uh, it would run in the menu bar, and you could, <laughs> it would run in the menu bar, and you could just click a button, and it would automatically close all the apps, and then like open the ones that you wanted, so you could just easily switch between the clickable button. So, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, my bad, my bad. I'm sorry, I got distracted. So, I got your passion, programming. I got, I got this aspect about you have on one side of your desktop all of the Xcode, iOS simulator, and all of that open. On the other side, there's gaming and, and all of the fun stuff. So, one more time, please. How you, what's, the, what's the startup idea? I understand the problem and the passion. Well, the uh, startup idea would just be that. We need to create an app that would just close all the apps that you have all open on Magic for coding and open all the ones that you need to see. Got it. Thank you. Big round of applause, please. Got it. Okay, who wants to go after if we can have uh, one more person line up from the back most So my passion is similar to the previous guy, but except uh, the idea is different. So the problem is that um, programmers like sometimes have bugs in their program, so it takes up most of their time. So it so my app will uh, create a image that's. Uh, that simulates what would happen in real life if the code is played. So, for example, you're trying to la launch a rocket, and there's a uh, code for that. So what you can do, do is that you open up a window, um, and copy the uh, code and paste it in, and plus the run button. There it will show like a, um, an image of the rocket launching off, and what will happen after like the rocket launched and like when it gets out of the atmosphere or and after it lands and stuff. So so the programmers can spend um, save time and money. Um, like if a rocket explodes, there'll be a lot of money goes to waste. So my idea actually saves money and saves time. How does that do that? It's, uh, it's a simulator you mentioned? Yeah, it's a simulator. Got it. Got it. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, so my passion is art. And um, if, if anybody's been to Dollar Tree, so they sell paint. And um, it's the only type we afford most of the time. So um, their paint is always grows or it dries up too fast. So when you open it, it's all dry. So um, my idea was to make a paint that was like other paints, but it's a little cheaper it's, um, and it, um, it can stay uh, not dry for a long time. So a lot of painters can use it all the time and reuse them and it comes in a large batch so you don't have to keep buying and stuff. Got it. This is a game changing idea, guys. How do you invent better materials for art? And one of the big problems is, you know, paint dries up and then you have to throw it away and go buy a new one. So working through that problem. So did I hear claps? 
Did I get an applause? You gotta do better, guys. Okay. Um, show of hands. Do we do more of these right now? Or do we go through what we have planned for today and then come back to doing the rest? So those that want to do it right now, put up your hands. Okay, those that want to do it later, put up your hands. Okay, so we'll do it a little later, okay? So we'll come back to those of you who haven't come up, we will uh, come back to you. I'm assuming today we can go longer. Right, Seema? I think we'll go longer today. Uh, hopefully the parents are okay, staying a little longer, because uh, we have a lot to cover. So we'll start running. So today's session is about turning your passion into a business opportunity. And so we are in week three. Uh, week one and two, from my perspective, was a lot of fun. I hope it was for you as well. Uh, tremendous amount of participation from you guys. Uh, which I'm very proud of. And then the ideas that have come out from each of you has been just phenomenal. It, it's been spot on. As I've said last time, uh, the, when we discuss leadership and we discuss what it takes to be a leader, every one of you and your ideas was spot on. And so that makes me really, in essence, on one side proud, on the other side, happy that, that we have such leaders that we're reading for the future. But, but nevertheless, I'm going to do a quick recap of, of, that, of the first two weeks. So, week one, right? Um, I, I think most of you have, uh, have really put it into practice. As I see you come up, each of you are talking about the concept, right? Which is fundamental. It's the building block of everything. Those three keywords, right? I'm not going to belabor it, but passion, creativity, and therefore, what is the problem to be solved in that area? Week two was very interesting, right? It was, as I mentioned last week, one of my favorite uh, weeks because I study this and I collect quotes, as I mentioned, and, and I like to breed leaders uh, in my work, as well as the other work that I do with venture capitalists. This is very fundamental to the work that we do, is to breed leaders. We talked about leadership and leadership traits. We talked about teamwork and we talked about uh, all of the aspects of collaboration and all of that. But we also talked about the importance of hard work. Remember, we talked about how important it is to never take a shortcut in life, right? And Bruce Lee said that really well, right? How many people know who Bruce Lee is? Yeah. How many people have watched Bruce Lee's movies? Not many, it's okay. I think a few, a couple of them are rated PG-13, so when you get 13, you probably should watch it. Um, but, but, but he says this, right? There's no such thing as easy life. There's no such thing as easy life. Those people who expect and look forward to easy life, they end up not successful. Those people who are able to put hard work, they're able to put deep dedication, into what they do, into their passion, are the ones who really have the highest likelihood of success. Do you think Mark Zuckerberg or Larry Page or Sergey or Marissa Meyer, or all of the folks that you talked about last week, got where they got without hard work? No way, no way, right? Marissa, uh, who, who, who talked about Marissa, right? She took, what, seven days off after she had friends? Eight days off after she had friends, right? That's unbelievable. My hat tips to that lady. She's back to work and working really hard. We talked about integrity, right? The importance of integrity in essence where there, there are people who cheat and who, who, who do things the wrong way. Guess where they go? Jail. Our jails are overflowing, right? We have a huge problem. Our jails are overflowing. We have to pack people off into other jails. Guess what? We are not that brief, right? Integrity is supremely important for all that you do. Always think about it. When you are put in a position and you have two ways to do things, 
And you know one is the right way and the wrong way. A lot of times, the wrong way is the easier way. A lot of times, the wrong way is the easier way. When you put in that position, and if you have hard work as your mantra, you'll always do the right thing. And then do always social good, right? Bring everybody around you up. It's not just about bringing yourself up. It's bringing everybody around you up. It's very important. Work, you know, a few of us here, I don't want to preach religion, but, but I'm very religious. You know, I work for, for God. I don't work for someone else, right? So just bring that into your focus as you become supremely successful in life, which I have no doubt you all will become. You all are leaders. Make sure you leave room to do social good. So that's the first two weeks. Um, I, again, very exciting for me. Any questions, thoughts um, from the back bench? Any thoughts about week one and week two? Any comments? Anything that comes to your mind? Come to you. Anybody? The question is, in week one, we got together as groups, and, and we did something. Uh, why, why did we really do that? Anybody want to answer? It got us used to working as a team, and uh, creating things based off of problems. That's right. It got you working as teams, it got you thinking about how you create new things, and guess what? If you're passionate about that idea that you develop, carry it forward. We're not saying that you can't do that. Some of you had great ideas, right? I still remember some of those ideas in trying to save the planet, right? Why not carry it forward? Well, it's too about like um, having a team and Oh yeah. So week one was go back, please, Murli, one slide. Week one we talked about how startups are born, right? How you channel your passion, you take your creativity because you're more creative when you're passionate about something, and then you solve problems, right? The same as the homework, right? And, and we do is about what you need to build yourself to be if you have to be in. Yeah, perfect. Any other questions, thoughts? I'm purposefully going slow, right? Because as I said last time, the first two weeks was a lot of common sense. But then if you imbibe it, you lay a very solid foundation. Because from week three onwards, we're going to go into, quite honestly, some very challenging things. We're going to talk about business plan and such. And some of the common sense aspects we lay behind us. So I'm purposefully going slow if anybody has any thoughts in there. OK, next please. So I'm going to take one core example of what it means to take a passion and convert it into what, in this case, reality being a big business out of it, but needn't be. Is Fong here? So Fong pointed out last week to me, it's not, the outcome is not necessarily making a lot of money. The outcome could be doing social good as we talked about. The outcome could be something else. But turning it into reality to success is the key part of this, right? So here's an example. Uh, it's it's uh, our favorite person, Mark Zuckerberg. So next please. So, so Mark, when he was at Harvard and he founded Facebook, uh, he says he wrote pretty much the whole Facebook, the whole code by himself. Uh, he didn't really realize, nor did he goal himself to say that I'm going to make, uh, what's it today, $200 billion company, right? What he said was he wanted to make the world more open and connected. And, and that was his passion, right? That he, he 
in a never-ending way, even today, talks about how he wants to get the world connected. He is focused now, for example, in the third world, in the developing nations, where he's trying to get people first connected to the internet, even before they can adapt and adopt a product like Facebook, right? Because fundamentally underlying all of this is the passion that I have to get people connected. If people are more connected, guess what? They get more educated. If they get more educated, if they're able to collaborate with each other, then they come out of poverty. Then they come out and be more successful, right? There are a lot of repercussions on getting people connected. And that's his passion. And today, if you look at it, Facebook has, uh, what, 1.3 billion total users. A billion users come and interact with Facebook on a daily basis, every day. Now, what he published tonight, uh, and I would encourage you to, next slide please. I would encourage you to, to study this, if you like. And I have a copy of it. If anybody wants it, email me, I, or I will publish it if, if there are a lot of people. Uh, he published this very pivotal letter. It was called the Hacker Way. And this was a letter that he published before Facebook went, uh, went IPO, went public. Right? How many people know what IPO is? You will know, not many do, you will know by the end, end of uh, we finish this course. See, you have some learning to do there as well. But, but an IPO, in this case, just to be very quick, is a massive event when a company is truly deemed to be very, very, very successful. Right? So when Facebook was about to take that step into becoming public, he published this letter. And this letter for me is very profound. I, I read it a lot. I read it a lot myself. I go back and I read it, and I read it again, uh, and I prepared with that letter. So, so here are a couple of quotes, but then the next slide I'll talk about the traits that he calls people, how to convert their passion into success, right? So uh, again, Facebook was not created to be a company, right? We talked about that. It was a social mission for connection. And then, and then here's a beautiful statement, right? We don't build services to make money. We make money to build better services. What does that mean? I'm going to come back. What does that mean? Well, uh, basically it means that, um, well, if you, if you start a company then, if, and, you, and you have a mission, then you'll start the company to fulfill that mission and not, not just make money. That's spot on, right? What's, what's your mission? And if your mission is, a lot of people have this mission. I want to make a lot of money, right? If your mission's that, then you're probably the candidate for jail, right? But if you have a mission that says, I'm going to change the world, right? And I'm going to change how things are done. I'm, I have a problem, and I'm going to solve that problem, as each one of you have attempted to do today, right? That is a different mechanism of the route to success. And that is the right route, is what we are teaching here today. Right? What we are teaching here is how do, you, how do you take that route, how do you be successful as entrepreneurs in doing that. Next please. And so the Hacker Way, again, a great read. Uh, it's only about five, six pages of a letter. So the Hacker Way, the Hacker Way talks about how So the Hacker Way talks about how you take what you have with respect to the resources that you build, your team that you bring together, and how you operate. It's, it's, it's really an operating mechanism, right? And the operating me mechanism has five components to it, right? And I, I realize I'm becoming a little bit of a, okay, here, here is what you should learn kind of a, a class here, which is not my intention, but I promise you I will stop after this. We make it very interactive. Again, I'm passionate about this. I like you. I would like you to pay attention to this because when you build a startup, 
believe me, each one of these things is going to come out in what you do, right? The, and so the very quickly, it's focus on impact, right? Always look at what impact you're making and not the little nitty gritty things that is bothering you or the things that small things are taken. Someone is taking a vacation to go to India for a, for, for, for a week. That's not, that, you have to rise above that. So focus on the impact, the point number one, you have to move fast, right? What Mark says, and he says to his people all the time, and I spent a lot of time at Facebook campus. Um, I, I used to go a, a day a week to work at, uh, at the Facebook campus for about two, three years. Uh, and, and what he says is, move fast. And by moving fast, there is no doubt you're going to break things. And it's OK to break things. Right? Because if, you, if, you, if you're not moving fast and you're doing things in a very conservative way, you're being very careful, uh, you're, 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 you're thinking about, okay, how does this interwork? He says, all of that is great, but move fast. And it's okay, because once you break things, remember, you only learn when you fall. Right? We talked about it in week one. You learn when you fall. So it's okay to fall. He talks about being bold. Right? He talks about being open. Open again the mantra that we talked about that he wants to connect the whole world, and then he talks about building social balance, right? And we talk talk about that quite a bit as well. Always leave room for social good. Always leave room that you are going to change the world and you're going to lift others with you. And that aspect he talks about in the letter as well. Again, I would encourage you to leave it uh, to read it. Email me if you want the letter. I have I have a copy. Um, but that, that's where I stop my preaching and we'll go in into, into a lot of dialogue from now on. Forgive me, this, this, was, this is a passionate part of me. Thanks, please. Okay, so now we're going to talk about uh, real world realities. Um, and in essence, we're going to talk about an interesting topic, which is what does Silicon Valley mean to all of you? Right? What does Silicon Valley mean to, to all of you? We live, and we are fortunate to live in the Silicon Valley, right? So next please, Murli. I'm going to skip this, next please. So, so, so who, who here knows what a VC stands for, for starters? A VC is a venture capitalist or someone who starts off your company by providing you with funds. Perfect. A VC is someone who's, uh, whose full form as a venture capitalist is not working. Um, and a VC basically provides you funding to start your company up. What does that mean? What does funding a company to get it started mean? It means that they're giving you the money so that you can make, take the opportunity in front of you and make it a success. Why do you need money? Oh, oh never mind. Oh, but no, no, make a point. What, what, what I was saying, uh, like, it's kind of like Shark Tank. When, uh, when you, they give you an offer and then uh, for the money and, and then you have to give a type of percent of your company. That's totally right. How many of you watch Shark Tank? Isn't it fun? So why do you why do we need money? Was the question that came up. You need it to market your uh, products and um, to make it better and get the materials. You need it to market your uh, your product and and get the materials to make it better. <laughs> so why do we need money? To, to build and grow your company, but why do you need money, right? You, you, can, you can go and, and go home and start coding and building a product, but why do you need money? All of this, are, uh, I'm saying your points are right. I haven't spoken to you. To start paying salaries of people, yes. To build a team. To build a team. Uh, 
To get your business started. To get your business started. Yeah. Like, you you need money to make your life better. You need money to make your life better. Yeah, I agree. Like, uh, you need money to like uh, pay the rent and stuff. Like, like if you're starting a company and you need money to like rent the uh, like office. facility, office. Yeah, you need money to 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 rent the facility. I see that. money to advertise, yes? Now, all of you, all that you have said is all right. Do you have anything? To make an idea become a success. To make idea become a success, yes? You guys are my first ventures, right? Uh, you need money to make your business bigger and better. You need money to make your business bigger and better. Do you guys? So, I will offer it up like last week as well. If anyone who's sitting in the back wants to come to the front, take a chair and come and come to the sides. There's a big room on both the sides. If you're feeling a little left out of the back. We need uh, money to actually build the product that you're trying to sell. Yes? You need money to build the product. Look, at the end of the day, a startup is all about building something from the ground up, an idea, taking it forward, building the product, selling it, advertising it. When you build a team, you have to pay the salaries. When, when, when you have people who are selling it, they also want a salary. You have to rent a place. You have to pay the government taxes. All of that needs money, right? And we live in a very beautiful space, a very beautiful place called Silicon Valley, not only due to the climate, but also because this place is tailor-made for the startup ecosystem, because we have our friends in the VC community who basically look at you, look at your passion, and invest in you, right? They invest in you in saying that, I believe that the idea that you've put in front of me and the team that you've put in front of me is the team that's going to take this idea forward and make it successful. And then someone talks about, like in Shark Tank, they take a portion of your company so that when the company becomes big, then what happens is, not only do you make a lot of money, but they also make a lot of money. So if I put a million dollars in a company, and then tomorrow the company becomes worth $100 million, the VC also will make $10 million out of it. And that's a big return for them. And, and that's how this economy works. So in a way, when you start thinking about your company and how you want to build it, you have to look for money. And when you look for money, you go to people who are investors. So what we are going to do here, as we help you build a company, if you remember the agenda, towards the end of this, we will have actual VCs come here and listen to your ideas and think about investing in you. Right? Isn't that cool? That, that you guys are going to be building something real and not just on paper. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yes. Very, very Isn't that cool? cool? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Who can name a VC firm in the Silicon Valley? I'm sorry. Before we go to that question, we have one more point. No? No. So back to the question. Who can name a venture capitalist? in the Silicon Valley. Okay, so this is your homework for next week. If you go and Google it, you'll find both major venture capitalists. Start knowing them. You have, entrepreneurs. you have to start knowing who these guys are, who hold the money, who hold the big checks, who can give you the money, right? You have to start researching these guys. You have to start building a nexus to these guys. You have to start building mechanisms by which your idea that comes in front of them so that they can start thinking about, hey, listen, I need to invest in this little student who has a great idea who I believe can change the world. So as homework, everybody come back to me and give me at least one venture capitalist name in the Silicon Valley, okay?
c'è Two for state is seven. Much better. So th this slide talks about in the new age of doing business, you don't have to look at traditional ways of doing business and how there are new ways to do business. Fundamentally, if you look at it, who is a retailer? Retailer is someone who sells products, right? So what if in the new economy you don't own anything to, uh, to sell and you're facilitating sales? That's Alibaba. I'll come to you in just one second. Um, Facebook. It's the biggest, one of the biggest media companies in the world. It owns no media. It owns no content, right? Um, Netflix is one of the largest distributors of movies, but doesn't own a single movie, right? If you look at Apple and Google, right, they are the biggest players in the mobile ecosystem, but they don't own any apps. They do, but the point here is, uh, Google has the search app and stuff. The point here is, in this new economy, the way things work, it's about the ingenuity and the creativity of how you bring things out. Uber. Uber is now one of the largest taxi companies in the world. How many taxis do they own? Zero. Zero. Very Right? Um, how do you think of this? It's like how eBay is a facility thing, but it's one of the world's largest apps. Or one of the world's largest things is selling stuff. That's right. eBay doesn't own a single product. Right? But it's one of the largest places where things are sold. Great point. So, so this one is, uh, I titled this slide, Think Out of the Box. So when you think about your ideas, don't think in any traditional way. Think outside the box. OK. So I'm afraid I'm going to lose a few of you, but I'll try to keep it as engaging as possible. I have tried to bring in a, a few examples that would keep all of you engaged. But this is where we introduce this concept of a business plan, right? This is where we introduce this concept. So now you have that idea. The next step is you want that meeting with that VC, right? But if you go to the VC and say, hey VC, hey VC, I want to meet you, I want to meet you. What's the VC going to say? You have no plan. What's your plan? What's your business plan? You want to say something? So you need your ducks in a row so that you can go and present to the VC, right? And the biggest building block for that, and, and this is what we, when we look at the VC side, we look for a comprehensive business plan, right? So I'm going to introduce the concept of business plan. Next please. So you create a business plan. So the business plan has a few major components to it. 
right? And a lot of you talked about it. You talked about when I asked the question, why do you need money? Some of you talked about advertising, some of you talked about sales, some of you talked about paying salaries, right? Guess what? There are all components of the business plan, right? So you guys are on top of it again, right? So in a business plan, it starts with the problem statement. So what are we doing today in the class exercise? We're saying, what's your passion? What's the problem in that passion area? And then what's your solution, right? Guess what? Today, by doing your homework, all of you have created the first chapter of the five chapters in the business plan. Aren't you excited? Yes! You created the first part of a business plan, guys. You've taken a huge milestone by doing the homework and coming today prepared today. That's supremely exciting, right? So the first part is, what's the problem statement? What problem are you trying to solve? And then, importantly, a VC will look at this. Is it really a big problem? Right? Is it really a big problem? So here, here's an idea, right? I have an idea that I'm going to create... Um, I, I wear black shoes, I'm going to create brown shoes. Is that a big idea? No. Nah. But if, if I create something that says I'm going to... I'm going to change the world that no one else is going to wear shoes going forward. They're going to wear this new thing I'm going to build. Is that a big idea? Yeah. Probably, right? So that's how you look at your problem. You look at your problem and say, yes, I've uncovered a problem, but is it really a big deal? Right? Is it really a big deal? And that's how you latch on to something big. Because a lot of times what will happen in your mind, you will go through about a hundred of those. Right? You will go through a hundred of those and say, eh, not a big idea. Oh, I'm going to try to develop a new laptop. Eh, I'm going to try to develop a new projector. Eh, I'm going to try to develop a new chair. Eh, right? But then some of the things that you guys come up here and talk about are big ideas. Those are the big ideas. Right? So always, when you start your business plan, give yourself the room to say, hey, am I on to something big? Right? Then the second one is, okay, What's the solution to the problem? So, it's great to say a problem, right? So now, me, big entrepreneur says, I'm going to invent something that people are going to wear instead of shoes. Right? It's a big idea, right? We all agreed, right? But I have no clue how to solve it. I have no clue what I'm going to do. Now, is that a good business plan? No. No, right? So, so I have a few things, what I call, so that I get the message across to you guys as what a business plan means, what I call food for thought. So I'm going to come around and I've formulated these questions, right? So here's the thing, right? In the problem area, what big problems are we facing with our health today, right? Let's, let's, let's hear some ideas. A lot of like Americans are facing like obesity and things like that. Obesity is a big problem. Uh, we still haven't found the right cure for cancer. Cancer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I was talking to the VC. Um, they're looking, they're, they're going to ask, you have to move fast, like what Marco Kurt said, because they're going to be asking you, okay, how much have you sold? What is your, how much, like, units, how many units have you sold of your product? Or how's your service going? How well is your service going? And also you have to make something that is unique. That's right. That's right. So we will get to that. Um, this little gentleman here says, how do VCs really evaluate you? They look at products. They spot on. We will get to that in a little bit. In the, we're talking about what problem we face our health today. Do many adults consume too much coffee? Caffeine. Affordability of health care. Huge issue. Food allergies, me including, lactose intolerance. Um, Antibiotic resistant bacteria. Antibiotic resistant bacteria. Vitamins. Vitamins as in supplements. Abuse of vitamins. Okay, this side. Why 
viruses, exactly, viruses are getting out of control, right? We are atta being attacked by all kinds of new um, strains of viruses that we have not solved for. Ebola and bird flu, and it's a huge problem. Good job. High cholesterol. Snake bites. Snake bites. What is that word? Yeah. For a person who does reptile? Herpetologist. I have to remember that. Sugar. Sugar. Drugs. Drugs. Now, how many of you here? Okay, one more. HIV slash AIDS. HIV slash AIDS. One more. So, how many of you here have a passion to be a doctor? Who want to get into the medical field? I see a lot of hands. Now, do you think that solving any one of these problems that people are talking about will be a big deal? Right? So, you can be an entrepreneur and a doctor. How about that? Yeah? All right. Now, in the solution side, so now we've all discussed how do we rack our brains to look for problems, right? We, we, we've, we've, we've gone through and, and, and talked about it. Now let's, let's start thinking about how to solve, uh, how to make solutions, right? So the question I put up for, for the group here is, what big problem did the iPhone solve, right? So Apple invented the iPhone. They obviously had a problem statement that Steve Jobs led, but then they solved it. we were using and launching the iPhone. What do you think is solved, right? It's kind of the converse question to this. The folks who have not come to the fore. You don't have to lug a computer and, and, and a lot of uh, other things and a separate phone. It, it, it brings all that together and it brings it into a very small form factor, right? What what problem did the iPhone solve? You can throw it into your pocket, right? You have a computer, arguably at the level of a supercomputer of the 80s or even the 90s, in terms of computing capabilities, and fits in your back pocket. You, you, you don't have to type in your password anymore, right? It, it allows you to use biometrics to get get into the device. Now that's a great point. How many people had a separate camera, a separate phone, a separate computer, a separate camcorder, uh, and all of those things? Now, now they don't carry it anymore. Guess what? The sales of Canon and Nikon and all of these cameras have gone down the drain because of the iPhone and iPhone alone. Shut up. Uh, you can access the internet? You can access the internet. You have the whole knowledge of the world in your pocket. Social media. Social media. You can interact with people. You can give Mark Zuckerberg what he wanted. He wanted people to get connected. The iPhone allows you to get connected. So via social media. Oh, like people, a lot of people lost their ability to like use them. You you don't need you don't need a separate device that shows you maps. It's all built into the same device. Okay, two more. You have a touch of a screen. Now, what else do you want to expect? You have a touch of a screen. A touchable screen. So a touchable screen, right? So it opens up a new paradigm of user interfacing. It opens up new ways by which you can interact with technology and computing. Previously, it used to be a large screen and you have to have a computer and a keyboard and you had to tap, tap, tap. Now everything is touchable. Steve Jobs made it so that, unlike all the other phones, this phone was consumer friendly. Yeah, the consumer friendly aspect was a big part of Steve Jobs. I'll come to you guys in the next question. Now, now you guys start thinking, right? How, so, how problems are solved. You get it, right? And, and that's what you have to present in the business plan, right? By doing the iPhone, I solve all of these problems. I, I don't, you don't have to carry a separate computer. You don't have to carry a separate, um, uh, what was it, Hershey camera. Right? You don't have to. You don't have to have uh, mechanisms of 
of a separate patch interface, right? And so da -da 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 -da, this is the problem that I solved. And guess what? Your business plan starts to look really good, right? The VCs are going to be blown away. They're going to go, wow, this person has really researched the market. They've looked at the problem, and they have they have come up with a great solution set. Guess what? The world is getting even better. You don't even need a phone in a pocket. You need only a wrist now with the Apple Watch. Okay, I will come to you guys uh, in, in the next part, right? Okay, so we've learned the first two aspects of the business plan. Now the next two start to get a little bit more deeper into saying that, okay, we have an idea, we have a solution, but that's so what, right? The so what. The so what is so important, right? Because at the end of the day, the so what means how can that solution to the big problem that you guys have solved will really create value. And by creating value means that there is a sustainable business model. What does a business model mean? A business model means that a solution has enough legs for it to be successful at the end of the day, right? How will you market and sell a product and why will people buy it is the business model. So how and, how and where is Coca-Cola sold? How many people drink Coke? I'm going to come to some of the folks who I didn't come to who had their uh, hands up. So how and where is Coca-Cola sold? Diet Coke, Coke. Where do you buy Coke? Where do you buy Coke? Yeah, in shops, right? So what, what, where I'm going with this is you have to start thinking. If you, if you, if you develop a new drug that solves uh, what we talked about cancer, how will you sell it, right? And, and, and where will you sell it? That starts the process of building a business model, right? Where else is Coca-Cola sold? That's right, Coca-Cola said if I throw cans into the Safeway, that's great, I get a lot of people buying it, but guess what, if I tie up with a McDonald's, and then when you go have a burger, you get you get a, a, a combo deal, and the combo deal you you get a coke with it. They start to increase the market share, right? So how do you get creative in building out mechanisms by which more of your product is sold, more of your product gets distributed, right? It becomes important. You can get them at like Pizza Hut and mostly fast food town. Yes, exactly. You, you, you just don't get it yet in Safeway or Costco anymore. You start getting it from different places. In a vending machine. There you go, right? So why do you have to go to a Safeway or a McDonald's to, to get Coke, right? They put the machine in the corner. You can go put coins and you can get your can and enjoy it. So Coca-Cola says, hey, listen, I found a new way by which I can be more successful and more successful. That's how you build a business model. Right? How will I sell it and how will I sell more of my product? Now here's an important thing that also gets you to the point where you think you've done a great thing. But then there may be other people who are doing it too. Right? There may be a lot of other people trying to do the same thing. Now if there are a lot of people doing the same thing, is that good or bad? Bad for you. It's bad for you, right? Because you have a lot of competition. So when you start thinking about your idea and how your idea goes through, you have to start thinking about, hey, are too many people solving that problem or am I going to be unique? And that, that's important, right? So who is competing with Tesla? Right? Who have I not come to? You may? Honda. Honda. Now, what does Tesla do? Tesla builds electric cars. So Honda is getting into that space, right? But when Tesla came out, did Honda have an electric car? Not at that time, right? The Nissan Leaf. The Nissan Leaf came out before the Tesla, right? Now, Tesla, when when uh, Elon Musk made the car, did he run away and say, hey, listen, there's already the Nissan Leaf, so this competition, let me run away. No, right? He launched it and here, here, here it is. The Prius. Right? The Prius was a, was a different breed, but it was trying to solve a similar problem as a hybrid. 
Google is competing, competing with Tesla. So here's a very important point, right? When you come out, are there competitors? Be careful. Are you okay? So, so when you come out, are there competitors is important. And guess what? If there are competitors, it doesn't mean you run away, right? Because when, when Tesla came out, the leaf was already there, right? So, so that's an important point. Secondly, when, when you come out and you have a great idea, be rest assured that many other people are going to enter it. So how are you going to protect yourself, right? So Honda is now coming out with an electric car. And then the third thing is, there will be a new breed of players if there's a lot of money to be made a lot of success to be to be gathered, who will get into it as well and, and claim their part into it, even people who may not be in that industry. So Google, who has never built a car before, is not going to come in into the space because it's a huge space. It's a huge problem. It, Tesla solved a huge problem, right? So these are very important points you guys have made in how to analyze your competition. How do, when you have an idea, to make sure that, that you think about these aspects really well. Next, please. The team, right? Do startups get founded and run by a single person? No. Nope. Nope. Okay. Why not? You need a team. Because two minds are better than one. Exactly. Why do you think? Why, why, can't, why can't I start a good company and, and, and run it and create a huge company and, and, and get it done? Which other people More ideas come to the table. So if you just have one person, then you're basically just saying that, okay, I'm on one person. I'm going to have to do one million things in, I don't know, uh, like there's an employer who's asking you, oh, I want one million of these roses by tomorrow. And you barely have any ro exactly. like people to help you. And then you're just like. I, I don't know about you guys. I can't do a million things, guys. I can't. I need a team, right? I need to bring people all up together. Some people might be good at things than other people. Core competencies, right? I may be very good at, at writing software, but I, I may not be as good as going and selling it, right? I may not be as good as going and finding a building for the company to have and, and have a pool table and a a table tennis table in there uh, because I am a programmer, right? So I need people with diverse skills to be able to run a company because a company is not just one thing. There's so many components to it, right? You get more opinions and ideas, right? You get more ideas and you can combine those ideas together to create even more value. You save precious time. You save time. Oh, and uh, you can manage more people with a team, so that, uh, work, like, like, uh, work can be done in like, like seconds. It's better manageability, right? So when, when I go, when we finish the session today and I say, guys, start forming teams so that you can start building your own startups, how many of you are going to come to me and say, hey, can I do it myself? Can I do it maybe uh, by myself? How many of you are going to come and tell me that? Good. That means all of you believe in teamwork. I'm proud of you. The, the next part is the financial model. Financial model is, is, is a lovely thing. A financial model says, at the end of the day, do you make money or do you not make money? Right? So for me to invent a new shoe or a new thing, I can put in a million dollars, but if no one buys it, guess what? Doesn't make any sense. Right? It has to make sense, not just common sense, but financial sense. 
And financial sense means that what you create and you sell, at the end of the day, the amount of money that goes in into it versus what comes out of it, it has to be net positive. If it's net positive, what's it called? Profit. And if there's profit, that means guess what? You have a successful venture, you have a successful startup. So financial model where the VC is going to look at you in your business plan and say, okay, forecast out for me how much you will sell of your product, how much will you charge, and how much will you sell, and therefore, how much money at the end of the day will be made by the selling. Then the VC is going to say, okay, for all of the things we talked about, including building that table tennis table and the pool table in your building and all of that, how much money went in into it, and at the end of the day, what went into it has to be less than what came out of it. You have to be able to make a profit. A VC will look at your financial plan, and at the end of the day, if you don't have a sustainable financial plan, the VC is going to say, hey, you're wasting my time. I'm sorry to say that, but you're wasting my time. Because at the end of the day, I need to be able to invest. And investment for me has to yield value. Right? Okay, next please. Okay, so that is a business plan, right? Are there any questions on the business plan from any of you? Okay, so first chapter of your business plan, let's continue and folks who have not presented will come up and we'll talk about your passion, What's the big problem area in your passion and what's your solution and your idea in essence? We'll continue that. We will go maybe a few more minutes over giving each of you, most of you, the ability to, to, to present. Okay? Now, before I do that, let me lay out the homework for next week. Next, please. Yes, so this is the class exercise. Next, please. <coughs> so the homework is as follows. So, I want you guys to start thinking about your founding team in your startup, right? So today, when we have presented, by the end of the day, all of the ideas have come out, I want you to find people who have a similar idea to yours, or if not, if you get along well with people, that's very important, that means your friends, you're, you're forming a founding team. I would suggest a founding team is any, anywhere at the minimum three to five, right? Three to five. So similar age group is also good to have. Start to convert your week three homework. So your week three homework, which is, remember, chapter one of the four chapters, of the five chapters. Start to convert that into a larger business plan, right? So start taking it forward as, as a next step. First, focus on your strengths, right? I talked about a bunch of things. I talked about financial plan, I talked about business model, I talked about competition. It's okay for you to start thinking about your strengths and things you know over and beyond those three things. Right? Over and beyond first chapter, start filling it up. Right? And I will help you starting next week on it. And then you will use the business plan template that I'm providing. So, so you guys are getting, and I'll say it not too loudly, you guys are getting something really awesome. This is what we use, venture capitalists, when we are investing in in, in entrepreneurs, in real life, we give them this template. And we give them this template to make sure that they conform to it. So you guys are gonna get something that, you know, people really clamor to get from VCs. They, they really die to get this. You guys are gonna get this, I'm gonna give it to each one of you. And it's easy peasy fee. All you have to do is start filling it up. So when we send these slides out, and we post it like last week, the slides after this have the business plan. So can you start running through those really quick? So, so that's the business plan template. That's the, that's the one it's adapted from a gentleman called Guy Kawasaki who is a part of Apple. Um, it talks about before you pitch to a VC what you need to do. Um, keep going. What's an executive summary of your plan? Um, keep going. What's the problem? Describe the problem, what's your solution, describe your solution, key benefits, feature, what's the business model, it talks about how to list a business problem, uh, what's your special sauce, what's your solution, 
keep going, well, how are you going to market and sell the product, keep going, what's the competition, who's on your team, what's the founding team, what are the core competencies of the founding team, what are the financial model and projections, what is the status and timeline, when will you deliver product, and that's it, right? So if you have mastered those 10, 12 slides, you have a working business plan that you can be sure that any VC will, will, will take a meeting with you to go, out, go, go and get, get done, right? Okay, so that's it. Let's go back to the slide that says class exercise. Okay, who, who wants to come up and, and start presenting the homework? I want one more person to start lining up to be next so that we can start going quickly. So, uh, one of my passions is sports and basketball in particular. So, a problem to be solved in the basketball industry is that many balls become over or underinflated. Uh, my solution was to add a chip that manages pressure inside the ball and have it transmit to the app on your phone to help you fill the ball. There's a technological solution to to a uh, big problem. Right? There, there was a huge issue with football, uh, balls being underinflated, and there was a technological solution to it then that would not have happened. There was a big lawsuit, and people got fired, and and and, uh, and people got banned, and all of that. Thank you for the So here, we, we, we will create mechanisms by which people can both learn as well as get access to figure skates so that more people can learn figure skating. Did I hear applause? Thank you. Uh, like a conversation, if you were to like bully others uh, for a long time, 
it basically sends clips to your teacher saying that this guy is really um, uh, mean and he's bullying a lot of people. So uh, you should have a chat with him and see what's going in his mind. And yeah. Bullying is a huge problem. Any and all solution we can get in that will be hugely beneficial to all of us. struggling with colors, right? Good job. Did I hear applause? Who you can rent from. 
Great job. So this is creating a network where when you want a book, you can either get it from someone who's sharing it or you can be connected to a library to get it. And conversely, if you have a book to share, you put it up in the exchange. Great job. but maybe there, there were some issues that they were not maybe trained. And so this company then creates mechanisms to train folks so that they can get better in sports.
So then you get this. Is, so then sometimes, like, the games cost money if you don't want to pay it. Good job. So here's a great idea. What if you write the game once and it works on all the devices, right? Not just on Xbox. So how, how do you make games portable? Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. I like it. <laughs> okay, big round of applause. So you know, people have started going out and stuff, but for those who have left, please start forming teams. Please start forming in your teams, picking one of the ideas of the rest of the folks. Which idea for you is one that you want to take forward and start building a business plan? We'll start reviewing your business plan from from next week onwards. We call it a wrap. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Nice job. Let me stop that. Should I just press the red button, Simon? Yes.